So in the next 45 minutes, I show you okay. how you can use Excel plus Power BI for everyone. So what does democratize mean? Very simple. BI for everyone. Now, you attend my session. What is the benefit you're going to get? First, you will save a lot of time. Reduce error, increase accuracy. Do better analysis, not just in Power BI, but also in Excel. And then of course, do better decisions and grow your business faster. So quick introduction of what I do. I'm not going to explain this 30 years in IT and I cover the entire platform, not just Power BI, the entire Microsoft 365 platform. Now, I show you many videos, many demos, so I switch off my video right now. Any question you have, just put it on the chat. I will take the questions at the end. Now, what is the problem? There is a problem about Power BI. What is the problem? Most people don't know what is Power BI. If they know, they'll benefit. If they don't know, they don't benefit. Now, people who use Excel need Power BI, but they don't know. That's the problem. So I show you the solution. I show you how to do it and who will do it. So what is the primary problem? Why people don't know about it? Because many people, IT team, don't tell users that they have Power BI. There is a wrong perception that to use Power BI, you have to have a license, and that's wrong. To start using Power BI, you don't need a license, but most people don't know that. Now, few people like Power BI, few people use Power BI, but 1,000 people organization, maybe 50 people about knowing Power BI. Remaining 950, no clue. And because of that, you're not getting full benefit of Power BI and of Excel. So what I'm going to cover in today's session is what every Excel user should know about Power BI. So why am I wanting this? Because even if you don't use Power BI desktop, still Power BI knowledge can help you improve what you do in Excel. So step one, improve Excel. Step two, go to Power BI. Why? Because Power BI is built inside Excel. Maybe all of you already know Power BI, but if you are just an Excel user, you don't realize that inside Excel there is Power BI. So Power BI has get data and edit query. Similarly, Excel has get and transform. You have relationships and data, which is in data tab and relationships tab in Power BI, but in Excel, the same thing available in Power Pivot data model. Visualizations are different. Of course, in Excel, we have only pivot and pivot charts. In Power BI, we have many more options and hundreds of visualizations. Sharing of reports, even today, Excel files, create report, mail the file as attachment. That's a bad idea. Ideally, we should put the files on OneDrive, Teams, SharePoint, and share it. Same way, Power BI, nobody wants to share PBIX files, but ideally we should post it on web and share the link. So half of Power BI is already inside Excel. And that is why I'm saying if you learn that, Power BI is available for everyone. So when we talk about analysis, what is the process? First, we get the data. Then, of course, we have to clean it, then shape it. Raw data, many rows, many columns, so we want to make it smaller. Summarize, then visualize, and then share, act on it. And of course, more data comes, repeat the process. So this is how things happen. So now, this part, half of it, actually is Power BI. So when it comes to using Excel or Power BI, are people using it properly or efficiently? Unfortunately, no. Excel people use for 30 years, still not efficient. 
two types of inefficiency. One is operational inefficiency, one is analytical. So what is inefficiency? I am doing something. I take one hour to do something, but I could have done it in three minutes. So that is a waste of time. That is operational inefficiency. So let's see how exactly people do analysis of data. All of you know what is analysis, but simple, easy to understand definition of what is analytics. So what we have here, some small data. I have 11 columns of data, 1500 rows. Now analysis means what? Understand something from the data. So if I ask you, this is the input. How many report, how many output you generate? Who decides? Most probably boss decide. So if boss asks for two reports, two reports. Boss asks for 10 reports, you will create 10 reports. Maybe you are the boss, then you decide how many reports. But wait, let's understand what is happening. This is data already happened, means it is past. Already done, can't change that. So what are we doing? We are looking at the past and trying to learn something from the past. OK, fine. Learn what? Oh, learn useful things from the past. And once you learn, what do you do? You use that knowledge to try to improve the future. That is called analysis. All right, so now question is how many useful things you want to learn from the past? So like I said, sometimes four reports, sometimes 10 reports, sometimes 20 reports. We stop at some number, so basically few reports. Now if you make 12 reports, OK, 12 useful things, very good. Question is, was there a 13th, 14th, 15th, 18th equally useful thing there? Maybe yes, maybe no. You don't know. So ideally, this is called inefficiency. I don't want to know few things. I want to know all possible useful things. And how to do that is called analytics. If you use Excel, Power BI, Tableau, Click, doesn't matter. The concept, every useful thing I should know. If I don't know, loss of opportunity. If I know competitive advantage, so the ball is in your court. So with this thought in mind, let's see how this works. So I have very simple three steps. I get the data, I analyze it. Yes, but big problem in between because data never in good format, so we have to clean up. Agreed. Everyone, time, money, energy, macros, lot of time go in cleanup. Actually, more time goes in cleanup. That gives you less time to do analysis. Am I right? So how to do this properly, fast, efficiently, without writing macros? Now, most people in Excel manually do a lot of cleanup or some users write macros or record macros. They don't know there is a much better way available. The problem is, what is clean data? Nobody knows. I clean the data, yes, but exactly why do I clean it? I don't know. So first thing everyone need to know is what is clean data? Clean data or good data, this is a checklist. 10 items. When do I use this checklist? I get the input data, raw data. For every column, I check. Is there a heading? Yes. No blank heading? OK. No duplicate heading? OK. Like that, all 10 OK. That means the data is good. So some of these not very clear, so I give you one quick example. So what is good data? Good data, one of the items I mentioned, no formatting. Why? Why no formatting? Like this. Look at this. So when I have data, I put formatting like this. This is bad. Why bad? Because who remember what is yellow, what is red? Maybe the person remember today. After six months, forget. So not a good idea. Color cannot be analyzed. Formatting cannot be analyzed. You can't get total of yellow or total of red. So remember, no formatting. Where analysis required, you need a column. So instead of formatting, put a column. And then if you still want color coding, use conditional formatting. Simple, important, 
simple thing, but people don't do it. Similarly, another common problem, data should never grow horizontally. It should always grow vertically. So this is the correct format. This is the wrong format. This is not a heading. This is data. So these simple principles people don't understand. That's why the input data is not good. And because input data is not good, analysis takes time and you can't get full benefit. Now, suppose I find out that there is a problem. Four is wrong, eight is wrong, nine is wrong. Now I want to clean the data. How do you clean the data? Many people have not even noticed that they have get and transform. Earlier called in Excel, it was called get external data. Very old, 30 years old, but now changed to get and transform. Now this one only for new version. No problem. If you have old version, you can still install Power Query and you get exactly the same thing. Now question is, does every user of Excel know what is get and transform? As a Power BI person, you know this is called Power Query, but exactly the same thing available in Excel. So the simplest way to make Excel people use Power BI is to work on the data cleanup. There are four common scenarios which you can show any Excel user. They'll be very happy and they will start using it. One of them is folder consolidation. One folder, multiple CSV files I want to combine. Very common requirement. Normally people open the file one at a time and then do it. Actually with Power BI, just seven clicks to come. Multiple files or multiple sheets, Excel files, also a very common requirement. People manually copy paste or use macros. Both are bad. Web copy paste, commonly not known. In fact, there is something called query by example, which even people who use Power BI don't know. And a new one, around three months old for Excel, PDF data import. Many times people have PDF files and from PDF file there is a table I want to copy and paste into Excel. This formatting is not going to go into Excel. It is not going to go pasted as table. Power Query is the only tool in BI which gives you PDF import. No other competing tool gives you PDF import. Many Excel users struggle with this. Show them this. They benefit immediately. Now another problem with Excel, which Power BI can solve. Many times Excel files are very large and performance become a problem. So what do we do? We have large data files. Everything slow. Drag and drop pivot table very slow and many people don't even know they have 32 bit version. When you buy a license, you can install 64 bit version. No extra money to be given to Microsoft, but most people don't know this. So Windows is 64 bit, Office is 32 bit. What is the benefit? No benefit, it's bad. Why bad? Because 32 bit version of Excel cannot use more than 4 GB of RAM. And nowadays all laptops have at least 8 GB, 16 GB. 32 bit Excel cannot use anything more than 4. And then last one is during data cleanup, calculated columns, calculated fields, people put VLOOKUP, sum if, and that makes the file even more slow and performance goes down. The solution to all this is extremely simple, but most people don't know that. Now, what is the solution? In Excel, we have two places where I can import the data. One is Excel sheet, but of course Excel sheet has a problem of 1 million rows. But even if you don't go to 1 million, even half a million rows still going to be slow. So instead of importing data in Excel sheet, we should be importing data into a database. The database which is inside Excel is called data model. Most users of Excel do not know this. In fact, on many desktops, this option itself may not be on because people have not gone and enabled that add-in. So enabling that add-in is very important. Of course, this can be done by IT centrally using group policy. So you go to com add-ins, go and make sure you enable power pivot add-in. Or map also a good thing, inquire also a good thing. Now, once you do that, what happens? People know that data can now be imported more than 1 million rows 
very fast, extremely good performance. The same Excel formulas will work. So the question is, how do you import data into data model? So that is where people have to be taught Power Query. Once people know Power Query, then life becomes very easy because Power Query allows you to import data not in the sheet, but directly into the data model and then all the problems get solved. So awareness about data model is very important for every Excel user. There is nothing about Power BI. It's a component of Power BI within Excel. This is not a new feature. 10 years already, but still people don't know. Of course, there is DAX also associated with it, but that can be step two. Now within Excel, once you have data model, we can do many things based on this. So nowadays people have not realized that when I go to pivot table, for example, pivot table can create itself not just based on table, but also on data model if I have a data model. In fact, the fourth option is also important. I can directly pick up data from Power BI, which hardly anybody is using. Even customers who use Power BI don't know this button exists, so it's a problem, but it's an opportunity. Now there is another very nice feature. If I have data which is in data model, I can do something brilliant which most people are not aware of. So let me show you that. Maybe you already use pivot tables, but there is one brilliant feature which you will get only if your data is in data model. So I'm going to put this data into data model. So I'm just saying add to data model. And once that happens, notice one beautiful thing. I just imported the data in data model. Nothing I did. I came out. I go to a new sheet and then I say I want a pivot table from the data model. OK, so it's going to give me a simple pivot table here. So this is the pivot table I have. Now once I have the pivot table, what can I do with it? Everything, but there is one specific thing I want to show you here. So I'm going to put some simple pivot table here. And here. Now many people want the pivot table data to be used outside. How do they do it? They just say equal to something like this. This is very dangerous. Ideally you should use get pivot data, but people don't know how to use get pivot data. Why do they want this data outside? Because they want to customize. They want this column here, that column there. Pivot table doesn't allow you to do that. So here is the brilliant thing. This is the same data which was in a sheet. I put it in data model and I made a pivot table. Now you get a very special option which is generally disabled. OLAP tools is normally disabled. Now you say convert to formulas. Now notice what happens. It still looks like a pivot table, but now I can move it anywhere without any problem and I can still refresh the original data model and this will refresh. So it's like a pivot table explode and use any cell from that pivot table anywhere. This is absolutely brilliant. People need it, but nobody knows it. So that is called convert to formula, which I just showed you. Now many people who are only using Excel are always doing time intelligence manually. For example, whenever they add data for one month, they manually add a column in the report and put formulas or stuff like that. So they need to know time intelligence based on DAX. Now generally, DAX is learned only by people who know Power BI. That's not correct. You should teach DAX to people who know Excel and what to teach in DAX, not the calculate command, not the concept of um, all kinds of filters, not row level filtering, not filter context, nothing. First teach them the time intelligence functions because those are most important for Excel users. All the time we are comparing this month with last month, this quarter with last quarter and so on. The other part which is very important, which is not really Power BI but new, is Excel ideas and QA. And the same QA syntax works in Power BI as well. I will explain it to you in a while. Now, the other thing is new Excel functions and related DAX functions. There are many new Excel functions which got added recently. And actually not recently, since 2013, new functions are getting added. Many people have the latest version of Excel, but they don't know 
there are so many features available. For example, if you replace all your VLOOKUP with XLOOKUP, automatically your performance is going to grow. But most people don't know that new feature was added. Lab Lambda is another brilliant feature which was recently added and let, which allows you to simplify complex formulas and improve performance significantly. Now, what am I asking you to do? Every time someone is making a report in Excel, they are getting some data. They are cleaning the data from somewhere. So there, whatever effort they are putting with their input data cleanup, they should try Power Query there. Many people have never touched Power Query, and that's why they are using the cleanup, using formulas or various other manual activities. So Power Query is extremely important. Now, there are some very specific features of Power BI which can be additional use for Excel people like direct query. Many customers who use Excel dump the data from a database. Instead of that, they could have used direct query and improved performance. They don't know this exists. Data shaping is a completely new concept for Excel users. So providing a category for data called geography or incorporating URLs for images is something people just don't know. And that happens in Power Pivot as well as Excel and Power BI. So simplest thing like this in terms of data shaping, many people don't know. So one of the things is click on a column, go to category, and we have multiple types of categories. Broadly, two types of categories. One is geography, one is for URLs. And of course, there is a barcode as well. So this is very useful. All business data generally has some kind of location information, but people have never seen it on a map, and that can be done just by using the data category. Similarly, you can define many other things here, which comes under data shaping. Another common problem is sort by column. People are struggling to do that. This is now easily available as sort by column. For hierarchies, even if you don't have a hierarchical master table, you can actually create hierarchies within the data model. Another underutilized feature. Now this is another feature which is a bridge between Power BI and Excel. So let me explain what that means. Suppose I have Power BI. I have this data here. I have three tables. Now one of these tables centrally I want to deliver to all customers or all users within the company. I don't want them to use list of cities and countries as another Excel table. I want them to use this list because this is the place where all my regional offices are. Now tomorrow if I add a new region, nobody has to update anything. They should automatically get it. How do we go about doing that? That's a comparatively new feature. So I'm asking or showing this demo. So now transactions table is not important to me. I want the cities table or rather places where my company has offices, that master table to be available to everyone. How do I go about doing that? I go to relations or my model tab, select the table, and then I say make this a featured table. Once I say it says, OK, what is the row level and what is the key column which has to be unique, in which case this is city. So the moment I do that and publish this, what happens? It's very interesting. Now, after I have published this and I go to Excel, what happens? There is an organization tab here. Notice these are three stocks and geography has been there for a long time. Organization was added recently. So that cities table is now going to be available here. So now that cities table is universally accessible across my organization and people can use that. So notice which cities were here. So just to give you an example, we have Penang, Manila, Sydney. OK, so I'm just typing manually. I don't know such a thing exists. So let me zoom in. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Notice the moment you type this, it says, oh, you want to convert it to something? Now it can be converted to geography or I know these are my cities, so I can even convert it to cities. And now notice it is going to link to data types and it has the 
data which came from Power BI. This is how Excel and Power BI can work very seamlessly. Absolutely not utilized feature. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, we have Power Query or data model for calculated columns and fields. So this is what I mean. Before even we go to the analysis part, even with the raw data part, there is significant improvement in the kind of work people do. Hours and hours of work can be done in seconds if you use Power Query, and that time can now be invested in various ways to improve analysis. So Power Query, whether you use it on Excel or in Power BI, is still on a desktop. Now with data flows, Power Query has moved to cloud. So what should we ideally do? Do the ETL part, the cleanup, import, shaping part on the cloud, then publish the valid data sets and let people use them. Basically, what I'm asking you to do is, even today, people are using dumps of CSV or export to Excel from some system and then using it. The moment you say dump to CSV, it's a static file. Tomorrow something changes, you have to do the dump again. That's a disaster. That's not only inefficient, it's inaccurate. So the only method of eliminating this is to use centralized distribution. How do you centralize the distribution? Either you do the ETL somehow and then distribute the data sets. How do we distribute the data sets? In Power BI, you publish them and certify them. But how do you use them in Excel? That is again commonly not known. So let me show you here. I go to get data, which is easy. Here we have Power BI. And in this Power BI, what do we have? We get Power BI data sets. These data sets are not here in Excel at all. These are going to come from Power BI and we can actually consume them right here. You will also notice there is a certification here. A user can say promoted, a data administrator can say certified. So this is user promoting. These are non promoted, so not very reliable and certified are the ones which are replacement to CSV dumps. Now this part even IT people don't know. They may be working on Power BI, but they are not focused on delivering that benefit to all users, even those who don't have Power BI. So this is how centralized benefit can be given to every Excel user. That's what I mean, raw data distribution. And you consume them in Excel. Now similarly, there are different Power BI visuals. Excel is limited in the number of charts it can create, but Power BI can create many more charts. So we should educate people about which Power BI visual is good for them. Now there are hundreds of visuals and people get confused. So the idea is not to confuse people. Idea is to empower people. So you start small and then go further. So the simplest thing you should do is something which people know from that you show them benefit. So this is a pie chart. Pie chart is a very common thing, but if you want to look at the proportions better, a better option is a tree map. And this is something people don't know. It is easier to understand difference in a rectangle than in a cone. So wherever you are using pie chart, try using tree map is a simple, easy to manage best practice. Tree map is also available in Excel. So that's how everything can be improved in small little increments. There's another brilliant feature available in Power BI, which is never going to be available in Excel, but it makes a lot of sense. That is called smart narrative. Probably you have already seen it, but let me quickly show you that. What you do is you go to a dashboard and maybe people are interpreting it differently. So just to create some space, I'm going to remove one item from here. And instead of that, I'm going to put smart narrative. What does that do? It analyzes this dashboard current contents and it actually describes it. And all this description is live. So now if I filter on silver card, for example, even the visual will change automatically. And I can even put my custom functionality here. So smart narrative is very, very useful. The other thing which is really useful is Q&A. Many people don't know or use q &A to the fullest extent, so I will explain that immediately after this. Now, one of the problems people have is people have never seen 
visuals even in Excel properly. So converting data to visuals is a topic not specific to Power BI, but even in Excel. So one of the most ignored things in Excel is 3D maps. This is there since 2013. It has nothing to do with Power BI. It's available as a built in add in, but many people have not even noticed it. Why have they not noticed this? Is it difficult? Absolutely not difficult. So if you have data here and every day we go to insert tab and insert a chart. This is three millimeters away. Still people have not noticed it. That is the level of underutilization. People are myopic. They just do what they are habituated to, but brilliant functionality available here is completely missed. Of course, Power BI gives you more maps as well, but let's start with Excel and then go further. The other inefficiency in every meeting room is we create analysis, we create visuals in some tool, copy paste them in PowerPoint and present them to boss. During the presentation, some new question comes and the worst answer to give is I will get back to you. I am sure you have said that, you have heard that. That is called inefficiency. So how do you eliminate saying I will get back to you? Can you give the answer there itself? Now, of course, one way of doing that is to have an interactive chart so you can answer questions there. But the other way is to learn the feature called Q&A very well. And this is a single most important feature every person in the company should know. Why? Because it's not just available in Power BI, it's also available in Excel. So where is it available in Excel? Let me show you. The syntax is same. So I go to Excel, raw data, clean data, go to home tab and click on ideas. What do you get? You get ideas, we know that. But above that, there is a Q&A here. And that is something many people have not explored. So this is so important. You should make it mandatory for every piece of data to click on this data ideas. If you don't have the correct version of Excel, you can open this on a browser. There you will get data ideas button. And here you can do interactive question and answer. Now maybe you have used Q&A, but maybe you have not understood the syntax of it fully. I am just going to quickly show you the language part of Q&A. It understands all these types of questions. Most of us have just scratched the surface of what Q&A can do. It's a really powerful thing. And furthermore, it is customizable to your industry jargon or your specific words, synonyms and so on. So it's very, very complex and very comprehensive. And this is available across different languages as well. It understands grammar. It understands language construction. Having said that, now what to do next? Many of us have IT which is responsible for giving us Power BI. Now, if you are from IT, maybe you can do it immediately. If you are not from IT, go and talk to your IT after this session. The problem is most people in IT are worried about talking about Power BI to users. Why? Because generally the Office 365 license for Power BI, you have to pay some $9 or something extra. And IT people are trying to conserve that money. So let me get this clear. To start using Power BI, you don't need any license. Even if you don't have Office 365, that's also OK. You don't have a single product from Microsoft. That's also OK. You are never dealt with Microsoft. Even then, you can use Power BI for free. How? Go to PowerBI.com, log in using your corporate email ID. That email ID need not be from Exchange. That can be any email server. Just log in, download desktop and start using it. When I say it is for free, always there is a suspicion. Free means there must be some restriction on feature. No, no restriction. Is there a time limit restriction? No, no time limit. You can use it lifelong for free. Most competing products, you go to Tableau, SaaS, ClickView, whatever, they may give you a free version but there will be time restriction for sure and also feature restriction. Power BI desktop is only one with no restriction. Now you will say, OK, if I use this, how do I share my files? So initially, just send a PBX file to each other. We are learning the platform. We are trying to 
judge how much benefit we are going to get out of it. So why worry about that nine dollars? Start using it, start getting benefits. Then you can think about the cost. There is no legal commitment. If you go for Power BI free license, there is no compulsion that you have to ever buy anything. And Power BI is designed for users first and then IT. And that's another problem. Many places where Power BI is being used, it's just being used by IT as another BI tool. I'm not saying don't do that, but that's step two. Power BI is first for users, then for IT. If IT is using it, users don't know about it. That's not using Power BI properly. And when you go to Power BI, everyone is talking about dashboards and visualization. That is wrong. First, improve the data cleanup. That is where you will get immediate and huge benefits. So that's how Power BI licensing is not a problem. In fact, it's an opportunity. So going further, many of you have competing products. Competing products may be uh, because I'm using Tableau, I don't want to go to Power BI. That's another thought process. Don't don't get stuck into that. Maybe you're using Tableau, ClickView, SaaS, Cognos, whatever. Doesn't matter. Still use Power BI. Don't replace it. In addition, use Power BI. Why? Because whatever competing product license you have, you will never have that license for every user. Whereas Power BI potentially can be for every user because it's a part of Excel. Even if you don't use Power BI formally, you are still having the capability inside Excel. So there is no extra licensing cost. So it is pervasive, used by everyone, and nobody has an equivalent, no other competitors, I mean, like Power Query. If you're already using some other BI tool, you'll realize that cleanup part is scripting to a large extent. Power Query is extremely sophisticated, and it doesn't get as much importance as it deserves. So show the Power BI tool to other tool users. They will actually understand the difference. And the last thing I want to say is it's not about a product X versus product Y. Remember, Power BI is a product, yes. Power BI is a product, but it is not sitting alone. It's a part of Office 365, and this is designed to integrate with everything. Now show me a similar diagram for Cognos or for SAS or for ClickView or Tableau or XYZ. This integration is never exploited fully, and that's the real opportunity. So what next? I will just leave you with some thoughts which you can immediately implement. So first, start from top or bottom up. Don't bother, just start somewhere. If you know something about Power BI, start propagating it, teaching it to people around you. Your juniors, seniors, bosses, doesn't matter. Start spreading the word. Eventually, you want to cover every user. Now, how do you teach all this to every user? You can't do a training program for three days long for 30 people. That's not going to work. So you use Teams live event. You have 50,000 users, no problem. The capacity of a live event is 10,000. In five two hour sessions, you can cover everyone. So that's how live event is the best way to disseminate knowledge to large number of people very quickly. You already have Teams, just three clicks to create a live event. Now Excel add-ins, everyone doesn't have the Power Pivot add-in properly enabled, Power Query enabled, so make sure that is there. Make sure free version of Power BI is proactively given to all users after the training because they will like it. And then most important, look at every process in Excel, every piece of data you are cleaning up either manually or through macros or whatever, and then relook at it and say, can I do it better using Power Query? 90% of cases, there will be a faster, better way using Power Query. And then now that the data is clean, where do you keep it? Now you have to decide slow files. Can I move the data to data model and get all the benefits? So similarly, I said raw data, which is commonly shared across people, should not be given as individual files. Do it centrally. And then very important, even if you have no dashboard ready in Power BI, you are carrying a PPT for an event or a preview by boss. No problem. All that you have to do is import the same data in Power BI, create the visualization blank. Just leave it blank and take that Power BI file also with you. 
So if a new question comes, at least you can use Q&A there. So that's how Power BI starts getting inculcated into day to day work. And another simple best practice, whenever you see a column containing locations, draw a map, whether in Excel or Power BI, doesn't matter. And once you find something which is useful to everyone, convert it to standard operating procedure. And then you will get enormous amount of benefits. So bottom line, create awareness, create capability, migrate slowly and standardize. Now the only question remaining is who will do this? Will it be boss? Will it be IT? Will it be BI team? Forget it. You learned just now something from me. If you like it, you do it and then we'll figure out what happens next. So that's it from me right now. If you want, I have a course on Power BI on Udemy as well. And this is my website uh, with a blog with 1000 plus articles. So if you have any questions, please ask. Yes, if you don't have Power BI and get data menu, then what you have to do is check the version of Excel. So you go to file account. This probably is 2013 or something. So if it is 2016 or lower, you will not have get and transform menu. In that case, what do you do? You install the power query add-in. Then you will get all the menus. Got that? And Nitin? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, when you say uh, Power BI for uh, uh, Power BI as free version is equivalent to what you will get. Uh, obviously, there are certain features like AI and all those things that are not enabled as part of or the data flows are not part of the whole whole thing uh, of a uh, of a free model. Uh, so is uh, because when we talk about Power BI as a as an organizational tool, is it because people are restricting not, I don't think so dollars would be a case for the power BI user. I think it's more about security. Um, so do you know or, or do you have an idea how how we can build in a, pro, a good security for 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 uh, institutions like financial institution where you get it less numbers where yeah, the absolutely. security part is much much more higher as compared to other organizations? Sure. So security part is taken care of. Now, when it comes to security of data and files, you have to use Microsoft Information Protection where you can have sensitive data marked and automatically the file gets protected or you can manually mark it based on sensitivity. So the sensitivity labels which are available in Word, Excel, PowerPoint and Outlook are now available in Power BI, giving you full data protection and all the compliance related activities which you are expected to have for full security. That is part number one. Second part is you said some things are not available in Power BI desktop. No, there is AI in Power BI desktop. The AI you are talking about is creating data models, which is not even a part of Pro. You have to have a premium SKU for that. That's a separate issue. That's step number seven. I am going one level below. I am saying every day people are struggling in cleaning up data and wasting their lives. Show them Power Query. That doesn't require any money. Power BI desktop is completely free. And four visuals here, which is key influencers, decomposition tree, Q&A, yeah, smart yeah. narratives, are AI based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that I'm also going to cover. Uh, uh, Nitin, just one more query about it. Uh, yeah. Because people say organization, where I'm coming from is that because there was an issue out here with the security concerns and all this stuff that yeah. we are working with. Because usually people work with Excel and when they want to share, they want to restrict this Excel. Uh, what are the best practices to restrict the sharing of Excel data between the Power BI's data sets across the reports? So, if you want to restrict the data at Excel level, then uh, there is no other than the DLP and sensitivity level. Okay. There is no okay. Thing. Okay. Yeah. Got, got, got your point. Got your point. But what I'm saying is, the way people are using Excel today, randomly creating files, copy pasting data, mailing the files to each other. Where is the security there? Has anybody bothered to check? For 30 years, we are sending attachments. Once the attachment goes, you have no idea what happened to it. So centralize the data that way you get more control as well as audit and in the power BI you get row level security, which is another great thing. 
All right, any other questions? So we are running out of time. All right, if no questions, then still shall we call it today? Yes, uh, thank you, Nitin. That was a great session. I'm going to stop the recording. If you have any other questions, you can ask it in the chat. Uh, otherwise, um, you can uh, stay connected with Nitin. Thank you.